Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of the last three brain cells and the host of Queen Taramina's and Oriented with Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented with Television. Well, I'll talk about this week here. Obviously, we're going to... The um, bracket formula has just came out for the um, boys basketball districts, and we're going to break those down. We're going to recap some um, some shockers, what teams are um, rolling, hanging in the postseason. Um, we're going to talk more Farmington's issues um, here on this podcast as well. Also, a lot in girls basketball as well. Also, we've had some – we had wrestling team districts already been announced, obviously. Um you know, we've had a couple teams win um, their their districts. Of course, um, Clarkson has been one of them. Um, West Blue is another one. Um, so, a lot to look at. You know, when you look at when you look at in the um, sports world in the winter in the winter sports here. Of course, um, we have cheerleading districts coming up this weekend um, at various different sites, and we're gonna break all those down. So, let's go to our main story here. Of course, um, boys basketball. Um, Obviously, when you look at the um, the district formula was released, the MHA released the formula on Sunday, um, which means you know in that formula here, if it's um, it's going to depend very on your districts. I know um, my co-host Ian Locke and I we talked about um, how the district lo- works, how the district format goes, and you know, and it's an interesting comp concept. Obviously, when we talked about the bracket. Um, Obviously, you know, you have your your teams that are seeded one and two. Obviously, you get the buys. Um, and then you have, of course, the um, other teams that are in your district. Um, if it's a 16 district, you go A, B, C, D. And then a five-teamer is A. I mean, in a five-teamer, of course, you have A, B, and C. And then, of course, in the fourth side, you have the top two seeds and the A and B. So, really, when you look at, the format of this district, um, if it's a five team district, um, a lot of these districts are five and 16 districts in boys basketball. So when you look at the districts here in, in a five team district, you have the, the, um, a and the B team are going to take on the number one seed. And then the two seed will take on the C team. Um, and then if it's in a six team, you're going to have B versus D and that winner and that winner will take on the number one seed. And then the um, A and um, C team will take each other on with the winner taking on the number two seed. So, you know, so when you really look at, and when you look at the districts right now, when you look at, of course, how everything's been going, I mean, I wrote a column on everybody's scenarios right now. Um, when you look at the district, the course, they're at the blog, or on my blog at Saginaw by 4650 at um, com. I've also posted on the O1 TV blog. Um, we specifically last week on the, um, fish drive podcast, we talked about, um, which I thought the fish drive did a really nice job. I heard over $16,000, um, really good. Um, congratulations to, um, everybody involved, um, the ONTB, um, you know, with the success, the ONTB fish food drive credit to Ian Locke, the executive producer, um, keeping up the good, keeping up. Doing a very, very great job, good job, especially the one to be fish drive. Um, you know, a lot of credit to him, a lot of credit to the um, to the um, Orion and Oxford Fish Pantry, um, and also the communities of Lake Orion and Oxford for doing a really, really good job getting sixteen thousand, getting sixteen thousand dollars. Um, really, really, um, really good stuff. Um, you know, for the um, fish food drive, um. So that's my um, congratulations to um, to um, everybody involved in that. Um, let's look at each district. I mean, like obviously, when you look at the, um, you know, when you look, I think when you look at a district that that really got screwed out of this whole ordeal, um, I think it's District Twenty Five in West Bloomfield because the reason why I say West Bloomfield. Because when you look at the Lakers, um, the way that that team's had, they've had a great year under Coach Arnett Jordan. Um, but the district really didn't give them any favors. And the reason why it didn't was because 
you look at the success of Wall Lake Central, that's how they've been doing the Lakes Valley. Um, and then also you have Orchard Lake St. Mary's in your district. So obviously when you look at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, you know that they're going to get a boatload of points because of the fact that they're playing a lot of good, very good competition. They're a lo- they're loaded. Um, you know, obviously everybody looks and starts and ends with them. Trey McKinney over there. Um, but there's others too. Jamin Salvi's a solid player. Will Smite's another one. Um, I mean, so when you look at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, you know they're going to obviously get a number one seed. Um, they're going to probably play either the um, Walt Lake, um, you know, they're going to probably play the um, Walt Lake Western, Walt Lake Northern winner, which I'm going to wish both those teams the best of luck. I know both coaches really well over there. Um, Dwayne Graves at Wall Lake Western, and um, of course Ryan Negotian, the coach at North at um, Wall Lake um, Northern. Of course, Ryan Negotian is the um, brother of Todd Negotian, who of course who coaches at North Farmington. So it's going to be a tall order um, for um, either one of those two teams having to go against Orchard Lake St. Mary's. But we're here to talk West Bloomfield because. You look at the success that that team's had. West, West Bloomfield had a great week. They knocked off North Farmington on the road. Um, 60-58 came back, I think, from 13 down to win that game. Um, and then, you know, and then they knocked off Rochester Adams. So, West Bloomfield is one of those seeds that are really high right now based on, you know, you, the success they've had. And, you know, you look at, obviously, the play of um, Donnie, Donnie Pittman, um, you know, Donnie Watts there, you got um you got Michael Pittman there. I mean, you got Drew Wilson. Um they've West I mean Coach Arnett Jordan's had a really nice year. I mean, they've had a really, really great year. Um but when you look at the scenario that they're in, in the district, the district for me did not give any favors. And obviously the reason why is because you got Wall Lake Central in there. And Wall Lake Central Paying they can get by White Lake Lakeland, which I think they will. Obviously, though, but the district, though, is at Lakeland, so it does give Lakeland a little bit of an advantage being at home. Um, but, you know, for West Bluefield, it's great to get the bye, and that's huge. Um, <coughs> but playing at, um, you know, playing at, I mean, like, but um, for West Bluefield, obviously playing at a big gym, um, West Bloomfield does have some experience playing at big gyms. I mean, you know, obviously they're going to have experience playing at Clarkston. Um, Clarkston's basically going to probably be the um, gym that is eerily similar to that of Lakeland. Um, you know, but Orchard Lake St. Mary's, I'm curious to see how they handle the gym, um, at Lakeland. Um, but West Bloomfield, I mean, like if they can get by, I mean, like their first round opponent would most likely be Wall Lake Central. And they're 17 and 1 right now. Um and then on the other side, if they win that, then you're probably you're playing Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the next round. So I know Coach Anna Jordan has really talked about preparing his team for Orchard Lake St. Mary's. And i t- I mean like I've even said it in my bold statement last week that I thought that I think West Bloomfield, they got a great chance to knock off Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, you know, it's not an easy chore, I'll tell you that much right now. Let's not forget last year, Orchard Lake St. Mary's had a losing record, and yet they made a run to the state semifinals, um, you know, getting to the Breslin Center. So it can be done um, with having a losing season, but also what helped them was obviously um, a match of talent they had. Um, well, one with Trey McKinney, obviously. You know, that always says something right there. But um, but I think West Bloomfield has a chance against St. Mary's. I, I just do for some reason. Um, because I think the way that they're playing right now, um, Arnett Jordan's really toughened up that, that schedule. Um, their non-conference has been just, you know, brutal. The, the schedule in the red has been absolutely brutal. Um, <laughs> but for West Bloomfield, um, you really got to, Look at it and say, okay, we're locked in as a two, getting ready for the, getting ready for the, um, you know, we're getting ready for, um, you know, preparing for the tournament. I mean, like, we still have a chance at the red title. Um, <laughs> we're tied for the league lead with North Farmington. Um, 
Who would ever thought that West Bloom would have been here? I mean, with the way that they were supposed to finish coming in the year, probably around the middle of the pack, but they've really blossomed into a um, perennial power, and that's a credit to Coach Jordan and his staff um, for doing that. Um, <laughs> but the district format really did not give them any favors. Um, so when you really look at the um, the that district over at Lakeland, um, that's pretty much where I see the team that really got ripped off with the district with the district formula was West Bloomfield. So really, <laughs> that's where I um, that's really where it stands right now. Is can you know obviously with West Bloomfield, I mean they're on the verge of having a nice year. Um, but their district, really, really difficult. Um, another team that I thought really didn't didn't get um could get could get um could have it really tough is Groves. Now the reason why I say this is you look at District Twenty Three, Groves hosts that district. Um, but you know Groves happens to having the number one seed right now, but. Look at who the A team is right now in that district. I mean, Berkeley right now is the number two in that number two seed right now. I mean, obviously with the play of, um, you know, obviously they're coming off a tough loss there. But Berkeley, people say, well, okay, um, Oak Park's played a tougher schedule than Berkeley. They have, but Berkeley has won more games. Obviously, the win against Troy is beyond monumental right now. Because we've seen what Troy's been doing. So, now you look at Oak Park, who is the A team in that district, along with the B team is, um, right now is Royal Oak. And then the C team is Warren Mott. And Warren Mott right now would be the team that'd be playing Berkeley. Um, so when you really look at Oak Park... Oak Park's been injury riddled all season long. And they're coming off of tough blowout loss to Clarkston. But when healthy, this is a really dangerous basketball team. So when you look at and when you look at the situation they're in right now, if Oak Park manages to somehow manage to pass Berkeley, then you know, then they could sneak in maybe for the number two seed. Do I see it? I don't think so. But it, but stranger things have happened. So if this were the case right now with the formula, how it is, Oak Park would have to play Royal Oak in the first round, which is very difficult for Royal Oak considering their struggles. Um, Royal Oak's been one of my most disappointing teams this year. Um, but I didn't expect, um, you know, they had, a, they had a great start early, and then they've kind of fallen apart a little bit. And but if you're, I mean, like, in, but Oak Park having to play an extra day, um, and if Oak Park were to knock off Royal Oak, that's going to set a big problem for Groves because Groves doesn't have their best big man in them. Um, and Josh Simpson, um, they don't really have their big, they don't have a lot of size. I mean, yes, you got really good players in John and Josh and John Gibson and John Gibson and um, Paul Hubbard, um, but you need to have somebody who can play who can, who, ha, who brings a big presence there. I mean, Oak Park we know has got Geo Hutchins, so but they've been injury riddled all year long, and if they get healthy. They could be in some serious trouble. And I think Groves could be it. Groves, let's not forget, you know, a lot of people look at Groves last year and said, okay, um, had a nice year, shared the white with them, with West Bloomfield, and then they come and play Seaholm, and then Seaholm upsets them. Now, albeit Seaholm had a lot of veteran experience last year compared to Groves, who was a very young team. Seaholm still has a lot of veteran experience despite their record. I think Seaholm's a better team on the road but this year, but we're going to talk Seaholm in a little bit here. But 
for Groves, this is a upset trap here for them. And the reason why I say this, and a lot of people at Groves are going to say, well, why is it? Because, and I'll tell you why. Because you look at Oak Park in there. Oak Park, we know, has, is a team that, when healthy, is very dangerous. And you really look at the fact that they could be in the same side as you in the bracket. That is really dangerous. And we know Oak Park's history. We know that they've had their issues with UD Jesuit. We know that they've had, I mean, like, they haven't won a district in a while. Same thing with Berkeley. Berkeley hasn't won a district in a while. Neither has Groves. So, perfect opportunity here. But for me, Groves has to be on upset alert for a few reasons. Because of, you look at, you know, how that matchup is seeded. I mean, it is a really, really dangerous predicament for Groves. Despite being at home, despite hosting the district, um, just seeing Oak Park in that district, it's going to be a nerve-wracking cringe if you're um, Coach Mark West seeing that. I know he's going to say bring it on and all that. I know the players are going to say bring it on. But if this team gets healthy, I think they're in trouble. If they get healthy, I think Groves is in trouble. So, in all reality here, um, you know, for Oak Park, if they get the number two seed, that's huge for them considering they would have to buy and they wouldn't have to play um, Groves until the district final. But instead, Groves, Oak Park has to play an extra day, which means if they win that, you know, but like I said, all this is determined on Sunday. But if Oak Park is in the same side as Groves, that could be real danger for Groves um, heading into that district. So, you know, that's going to be very interesting to see how um, that, if that matchup plays out. Um, another interesting district over at Troy Athens. Um, setting this district up. Um, you know, you got Bloopia Hills and Seaholm playing each other. This will be the third meeting between those two teams. I mean, they're going to be playing three times in the span of three weeks, um, which is going to be really interesting. Actually, they play a Thursday game and a Saturday game. So, two times in the span of three days, which is going to be really interesting. Um, considering, you know, you look at how, how both those teams have been. Um, and then you have Troy, Troy, Athens. Um, they play final game of the season on the 23rd. Um, they're going to play on Thursday. And then they got to play their last game as a makeup on the 23rd. And then having to see each other the next week on that Wednesday. So it's going to be interesting to see. I'll be curious to see how, how um, Coach Gary Fralick and Coach Dave Scott um, handles that second matchup at Athens um, to see how that one goes. Do they, do they like, because they know that they're going to play each other on that, um, on that Wednesday, um, considering you look at Birmingham, see against see home against um, Bloomfield Hills, considering um, you know how those two teams are. Obviously, both see home and Bloomfield Hills have really struggled this year. But when I look at see home's case, and see home's been a real deceptive team on the road, and the reason why, it, and the reason, and, and it's interesting because. When you're on the road, you tend to not have a ton of pressure on you. You're not expected to win on the road. And Seaholm's done this twice now. Once to Harper Woods and then once to Lake Orion. Seaholm plays a Princeton-type style, keep-away style, which is, you know, they'll slow you down. It's not stall ball, but they tend to keep that style away from you. And you, and that style works. And it, it does, it works. I mean, like, considering you don't have a shot clock in, in, um, in the MHA, you don't have, you know, which I know a lot of people have been really been asking for is a shot clock. Um, I know there's a lot of pros and cons to having a shot clock. 
Um, but, you know, there's a lot of options to, um, you know, to basically say, like, um, you know, like, you know, I mean, like, you know, it's harder on a timekeeper um, to do to do a shot clock because you got to get the time and the and the shot clock right. Um, so it is easier to do it without a shot clock, and I know it's frustrating. Um, but I know, you know, but if there's a way, you know what I mean, like to at least have an advantage, not having a shot clock. See, him takes advantage of this really well. By playing this Princeton style offense that they run, um, the keep away ball, um, which is it's frustrating, but it's also you know a very smart strategy when you look at it. Um, Seaholm really showed that in their wins against Harper Woods and Lake Orion is you know they really played that stall ball, a keep away basketball to where you know it frustrates the other team. It limits the opponent's possessions, um, you know, and that's what happened um, in the in the in the two games that Seahawks played against Harper Woods and Lake Orion, respectively. Limited the opposition's possessions, and then you know when they don't have the ball, you know, when it forces them to have to execute offensively. You know, if they don't, you know, then you're not going to get another opportunity at the basketball. So, you know, so really that's where the the word um, Princeton offense really comes with, and you know, that really describes Seaholm. Bloomfield Hills, very young this year. Um, the future there is bright over there for Coach Brian Canfield. Um, you got um, Phil Muhammad, Deron Mason. Um, you know, I mean, like, they're going to be really good players. They're talented players over there for Coach Brian Canfield. Um, Carter Canfield is going to be a player to watch for next year, next few years. Very dynamic shooter. Um, Blue Bay Hills, they got, they got talent on that team. They, they got talent, but it's very young this year. They lost so much after, you know, anytime you lose Noah Adamchich, um, you lose a Drew Wilson who transferred out. Um, it's going to be a cha- it was going to be a challenge for them anyway. Um, so it'll be interesting to see who plays Birmingham Brother Rice in the next round because. You really look at how good Birmingham Brother Rice has been. I mean, but they have looked human recently. I mean, they've looked good as of late, but they were he- they've looked human for a couple weeks now, until um they got um until they started um to play um they they, they turned they had a game where they turned their season around. Um, they're back rolling again. Um, they have an Oakland commit in there, and um, I think Wade Marshall, Warren Marshall. Um, I mean, Ricky Palmer's done a really nice job. With that team. And then you look at on the other side. Troy, Troy, Athens. Same situation. I mean they're going to probably play three games in three weeks. Um, you know so. It'll be. I'm curious to see how that second meeting is going to be on the 23rd. Um, because I don't know if, if Coach Gary Frelick or Coach Dave Scott. Will show anything. Considering that you know that both teams are going to play each other. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how that district goes. In in. Uh, when those two teams meet. Um, Harper Woods is in a really interesting spot um, when you look at their district. Um, obviously, it's... Do you want to see... Who wants to see Detroit East English Village prep um, in the, with them? Because you really look at... Um, you really look at what Harper Woods' situation is. East English Village prep, they're not a bad team. Um, if they get the top seed in the district, they would see them in the semifinals. Um, Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy right now has the top seed. Um, but, um, you know, but it would be interesting to see if, um, Coach Juan Porter's team, if they are seated second, that's okay if they're seated second because, you know, they, you won't have to avoid the toughest part of the district. Obviously, when you look at teams like East Point in there, you got um, St. Clair Shore South Lakes in there, um, so that's going to be interesting to see how um, you know, considering you have Detroit um, East English Village Prep in there, and I think they're going to pose problems for Harper Woods if they do play them. So, but Harper Woods will help them as they're going to have home court, which helps. Um, so we'll see how that one goes. But Harper Woods, you know, I think 
the number two seed um fits them better right now. That's what I'm looking at when it comes to formula. Um, the district over at Adams. Um, you know, I'm looking at this. If if this were the matchups right now, I would be Rochester would play Romeo. That winner would take on Rochester Adams, and then you would have um, Stony Creek and Utica Eisenhower, and that winner takes on Utica. And Utica right now is the number one seed with their um, their unbeaten season right now they have. I'm not real sold on the Chieftains for some reason. I, I can't trust Utica. There's a couple reasons why I don't trust Utica. Um... The conference they're in, I think they're in the Mac White this year. Um, they do have a win against Utica Eisenhower, which I thought has really underperformed this season, um, considering the talent they have. You know, I mean, like, so I've been really disappointed with Utica Eisenhower with the way that they've been playing this year. Um, and then you got Rochester Adams in there. I mean, Adams. You know, you kind of knew with them that, you know, playing in the red was going to be very difficult for them. For um, Coach Isaiah Novak, you know, I mean, like, for them to be the number two seed, I thought, in my opinion, I thought personally, and this is my own honest opinion, I think Adam, in my opinion, should be the number one seed because of the schedule they played. They have, I mean, if you put Adams in Utica, you put them in the eyeball test. I've seen both teams play. And Utica's a senior heavy team. But I have seen the eyeball test and Adams clearly passes that test. Um and then you look at on the on the district side and then you look at on the first round side, Rochester playing Romeo in the first round. That's gonna be an interesting game. Because you look at you look at that matchup. The battle, you got two star guards in Aiden Tag of Romeo and Max Mall Rochester. It's going to be interesting there. The question is going to be the interior. Is Does Jake Tandy have a big game? Um, do they, does Rochester use their size? Now, with Romeo, past history is against them. You look at the history of Romeo. The last couple of years, ever since they have not been the same team since 2019. And I remember that team really well. It went, um, you know, Romeo had a really, had a, had a good player on that team. Um, really kind of an individual Trallick player. Um, had some odds at times with Coach Marv Cushenberry. Um, and then, you know, they had that loss. You know, they had a loss to um, Oxford. Um, and then 2020, of course, they had a, um, it was a good, good golden opportunity for Romeo. Um, end up losing to a, um, to a Lake Orient team that was very young. And then 2021, um, got by the first round um, by knocking off Oxford, but then lost a tough one. But then they lost a tough one to Adams. And... You know, and then, of course, um, last year had this almost collapse. They were up by 18 at one point against Stony Creek. And then and then had to survive them. And then played um, and then played Utica Eisenhower and ended up losing that game. So, I don't know if there's pressure on Marv to um, get to a district final. But it's a tall order. I mean, for Romeo, it's just, you know, you've had a struggling, you've struggled this year. You have really struggled. And, you know, and, you know, you look at, you got in it, and you got to deal with Adams. So, you know, so I'm curious to see what they do with Romeo. Rochester's got a golden opportunity here. I mean, you know, Max Mall, he's got to prove he's the best guy. He's got to be the best player here. Then on the other side, you have Stony Creek taking on Utica Eisenhower. Utica Eisenhower, is, both these teams have really underperformed this year. Um, obviously, Stony Creek right now, the way that that team's been struggling. Um, you know, second year under coach Jeff Owen, you kind of see some hints. But it's clear as day Trey Walker has to be on the floor for this to work. Because if not, they're in trouble. 
Um, I mean, that's really what the bottom line is. They're in some trouble. Um, and then that winner takes on Utica. So I think if if Stony Creek steps their game up, I think they got a shot at the district final. Because I think they can beat Utica. I think they can beat Utica. But if they don't, Utica Eisenhower wins over that over over um, Stony Creek, and then Utica Eisenhower takes on um, Utica. And I think Utica Eisenhower can beat Utica. I mean, Utica this year, I, I can't trust that team. You know, despite having the number one seed, I mean, everybody else has played a more tougher schedule than Utica. Um, but here they are, top ten in the um, top ten in the rankings, state ranked, I guess, and then. Obviously, in um, in of course the D zone rankings. I mean, like obviously, of course, I know Je I know Stu Carlson and um, and Jeff Corn very well, um, but I, I just can't trust Utica with one B. I can't trust them. I really can't. So, but when you look at that formula, I think Adams right now is in a really good position to to get to the to get to at least the district final. I think they're in a really good spot. I think they can win that district. Um, and then you look at, um, the district over at, um, you know, at Ferndale, obviously, you know, you look at, uh, with, over at Detroit Pershing, you look at, um, you know, whoever has to play Detroit Pershing, I mean, right now they've been played to play Ferndale University, uh, and then that one is taking out Ferndale, um, Ferndale's in a tough spot, I mean, really are, if you're Coach Juan Rickman, you have the two seed, I don't see you getting the number one. I think Warren Lincoln's way ahead of you right now. Tall order for Coach Juan Rickman and his team. Really, really tall order. Um, so it'll be a tall order for them. So, but I th but they still have a chance to win the district championship. I mean, Warren Lincoln. I think Ferndale's got a shot, but they got to play real well. I mean, they really do. Um, you know, for Coach Juan Rickman, that's gonna be the challenge for the Eagles. Is can they? Can they, can they find it, that magic like they did last year? And when they turned it around, um, you know, that's when things started to click, and that's when they won the Division Two state championship. Was when everything started to click, and you know, and right now it's not been clicking. So we'll see right now with the Eagles. I mean, but they're in a really, really tough spot right now. So we'll see where they're at. Um, District 25, this will be over at, uh, District 27, this will be over at, um, over at, um, Grand Blank. Um, everything looks to be almost set in stone here. Um, Oxford right now is the C team in the district. Um, they're looking at playing Grand Blank in the first round. Grand Blank started off 0-5. Um, they are, um, they are, um, 8-2 since. Um, so that's a credit to the Bobcats. Um, Oxford, we know they have Jake Champagne. Um, but uh, Holly, Holly have that play Lapierre first. And then da and then that winner takes on Davison. Um, Davison, we know how good that team's been. They've been really good all year long. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how, um, how Oxford can handle that scenario if this was the scenario was... But obviously, it looks like right now Oxford's set, locked in as a C team, um, playing Grand Blank on that Wednesday. Not having to play it on Monday is a big deal. Um, but I don't know if I see Oxford getting one of the two seeds. So, you know, so either way, I think they're locked into playing Grand Blank either way. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, and then you have District 20. 24, it'll be at um, Livonia Stevenson. Um, I got to talk North Farmington because when I look at the Raiders right now, they have lost two at three. That's not Coach Todd Negotian like. They've lost two at three in February. That's not good. Especially when you, and then you had to survive against Ferndale. North Farmington has not played really well. Since the game against Grand Rapids, um, you know, Canona Hills. I mean, they have not been the same team since that game where at Aquinas. They have not been the same team since. And 
they've actually it's Grand Rapids Northview. My bad. They have not been the same team since that game, and they had to survive. Um, they have not played to their potential, and that's scary. If you want to be a team that wants to go to the next round, that's scary because. You look at your district. Your district looks manageable. It looks very favorable. Um, you should get out of that district. You're the top seed um, locked in that district. But the race for the number two seed in that district is really tight right now between three teams. You got Farmington. Farmington, we know, has been well improved um, under first-year coach Byron Johnson. A lot of that's been because of the performance of Greg Grace. Then you have Livonia Stevenson. Um, who's the host in that district, and then Livonia Franklin. There's a big difference from having to play on Wednesday compared to having to play on um, on Monday. Um, right now, Farmington has the number two seed. So right now, if the district was in, and it's a six-team over at Livonia Stevenson. So it would be right now, um, it would be... Um, Livonia Franklin would take on Redford Thurston, and that winner would take on um, and that winner would take on um, Farmington, and then on the other side you have Livonia Stevenson taking on um, you know Southfield Arts and Tech, and Southfield Arts and Tech has really struggled this year. They've had a rough year. Um, and then you know you look at the other side, you have um. Yeah, Farmington. Farmington's got, a, I think, a great chance to get the district final. Now, if Farmington were to get past, they're the A team, which means they would play Redford Union, Redford Thurston, and you know, and that winner would get either Livonia Stevenson or Livonia Franklin, and you know, Livonia Stevenson or Franklin would be deemed the B team. So, South Anderson Tech is locked in as a D. Um, Redford Thurston is locked in as a C. Um, so it's going to come down to who is the A team, who's the B team, and who's the two C. That's that's where the bracket will get decided over at um over at Lavonia Stevenson is that's the battle line right now over there. And then the district over at Waterford of Kettering, um, you have. Lake Orion, who's locked in as the B team, is going to take on Waterford Kettering, who's locked in as the D. Um, that winner is going to take on Waterford Mott, who right now has the number one seed. Um, it looks like they could get the number one seed, but it'll be interesting to see how Waterford, I mean, Waterford Mott has been playing really good basketball as of late, but they look human. I mean, they they don't, I mean, they have a, they have a good team. Don't get me wrong, they got a really good team. Jeff Jason's a really good coach. Um, I mean, I like Jacoby Manningweather's a lot. He's a really good player. Um, but then you look at, on the other side, you got Avondale, Clark, Avondale and Clarkson. Pontiac's locked in as a seed team. So that matchup's either going to be determined, it's either going to be Avondale or Clarkson, who gets the two seed. Clarkson's played a tougher schedule than Avondale, but Avondale's won more games. So, it'll be interesting to see now, on paper, this is a completely terrible match for Avondale because I'm not being mean to Coach Jared Thomas, but, you know, the fact that you still control your own destiny in the blue, um, you you got to basically, like, look at it from this perspective and say, okay, um, you know, Clarkson's played a tougher schedule despite the fact they sit 500. Um, Avondale... You know, his role, but they have not played the schedule like Clarkson has. So, you know, if Clarkson has to play on that Monday against Pontiac, this is a completely terrible situation if you coach Andrew Myers of Pontiac. Because the formula didn't give you any favors. Now, I'll be on the other side of things with Lake Orion. Lake Orion's got to play the whole school. They got to play the whole school water for Kettering. And we know the history of Steve Emmer. You know he likes to slow the game down. And Lake Orange for sure did not do a good job of that against Seaholm. 
Um, so if you're coach Jose Andradas, you got to figure a way to slow the game down. You got to figure a way to, to get to the players and say, look, you know, you're, you got to, I mean, your defense has been good, but you got to find ways to put the ball in the basket. You got to execute better offensively. And, you know, you got to find out, okay, who's going to be that guard who steps up? Is it Gabe Scott? Is it Nick Galvin? Because um, I think that's where the big problem is right now for Lake Orion is, is it the guard situation? Because, you know, when you look at, you know, they have not gotten consistent guard play from from Gabe Scott or Nick Galvin. They have not gotten it, um, which is a big problem. Um, now, Lake Orion, obviously not having a true point guard, you know, Lake Orion's not had a true point guard for years now. I mean, obviously you look at, under coach Jim Manzo, you had Jamie Lewis. You look at, of course, you had, um, you know, you've had Kyle Loken. Um, you've had Malachi Granberry. Um, you know, Malachi Granberry, no offense, not a true point guard. Scoring guard, though. Um, and then last year, you had DJ Morrow who had to play some time at point. So, you know, so Lake Orion really has not had that true point guard. But they got to find scoring from the guard spots. You just can't rely a lot on Zach Parks, Quay Fly, and Ryan Lushow to carry you. You can't rely on that. You know, they're very good players. They can lead you in scoring, but they have to They have to have help. You know, and obviously that's where the key has to be for Lake Orion is going to be the guard play. So that's the big question for the Dragons. Um, now the guard matchup is um, the guard matchup's interesting because... You know, obviously with Kettering, you know they're hard for work hard. They have home court. Well coached under Steve Emmert, despite the record. Um, and then that winner takes on Water Vermont. Water Vermont, heck of a team. I mean, they have three point shooters and go inside with Trevison inside. Um I mean like, you know, and I think it'll be interesting to see how that one goes, but you know, for Lake Orion, I mean, like, in Lake Orion right now, they're locked in that number two C, uh, B team. Um, and I think that district's going to come down to Avondale and Clarkson. You know, so we'll see how that one goes. Okay, now, that's my thoughts on the bubble, on the um, bracket right now. I mean, they're all going to be announced on Sunday, um, the matchups. So, we head into the final week of the season. Of course, the NPR is still in effect. Um, the girls' side of the formula gets released, um, this upcoming weekend, which is going to be interesting to see how this one goes. Now, Pontiac, of course, they dropped out of the district um, over at Water, Vermont. So now it's a 14 district over at Mott, which will have Clarkston, Lake Orion, um, Water for Kettering, Water for Mott. Still no changes when I look at that district. I still look at it's still going to be a Lake Orion, Clarkston district final, um, most likely over there at Water for Mott. So not a lot of changes there in when it comes to the district in that match in that um you know despite Pontiac dropping out so it'll be interesting to see how Coach Christopher Wright handles the final few games of the season um so we'll see how it goes um and then you look at um you know when you look at the way teams are playing right now the red you know you kind of like look at it and say like you know. Everything's working out what it's supposed to be. I mean, Lake Orion struggled, but they're getting better. They're slowly getting their confidence back a little bit. You know, they've had to play West Bloomfield. Everybody else has got to play West Bloomfield in that division. So that's going to be really difficult to see when those teams have to play them. Um, Clarkson, of course, looked... Um, I was shocked how Stony Creek played against, um, you know, Clarkston. Um, didn't look good against Detroit Country Day. Um... But they bounced back and beat a good Wall Lake Northern team. Um, had to survive that one by 8, 49-41. Um, Sarah LaPrairie, I think, had 13, 14 in that game. Um, Rochester and Oxford had their um, two games played this week, both splitting each, splitting a game. Um, and then Lake Orion, obviously, um, you know, they, I mean, having to go through the West Bluefield gauntlet. So... You know, so it is what it is. So we'll see what happens. But right now, you look at the red right now. West Bloomfield locked in low, locked in right now to win that division. Um, not even close. The white's going to be where I think going to be the, the tennis drama is going to be. 
mean, Harper Woods is coming off a loss to Bloopia Hills. Um, Royal Oak now leads that division. And obviously, you know, they split with Seaholm. Um, Royal Oak got Seaholm back in Birmingham. Um, and then you look at, um, you, and then you look at, um, you know, Harper Woods is right there in the mix. Um, North Farmington's been on and off. Um, they've been hoovering around 500 a little bit. Haven't really been the same team since the, um, you know, what happened to Anaya Billups. I know she's back now. Um, but when you look at this division, Royal Oak, Bloomfield Hills, um, Seahome, Harper Woods right now are really the teams to beat right now in that division. Um, you really can't, you just can't like, um, you know, I was, if there's a clear cut favorite right now in that division, it has to be coach Brian Zapata's team because of the experience. Um, they've been battle tested. We know the experience that they have. But for me, when I look at Royal Oak, it comes down to is can they handle life in the red? And they did knock off Rochester, which is huge. But the game I think a lot of people are going to know about is on the 20th when Clarkson comes in there. And I think that'll be a, that'll be a, um, you know, I think that will be, that will say a lot if Royal Oak is ready for the red. Um, if the Ravens, um, truly belong in that division if they can somehow knock off the wolves um which it's a, it's a difficult task now albeit clarkson's different you know at home and on the road you know with that when you look at with young teams um you know so but we'll see i mean we'll see i mean clarkson we know they've been battle tested obviously um they played a tough schedule um you know, they do have a very good player in Eliana Roback. They have Brooklyn Colbert. Um, Ellie Valencia has really stepped up. Ella Morgan has stepped up. Um, so it'll be interesting to see when that one goes. But that'll be the um, indicator for Royal Oak if they do belong in the red is when Clarkson comes in there. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Seaholm, we know, has been up and down. Harper Woods has been up and down. Um... I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Let's go to the gold now. Um, obviously, when we look at this division here, um, the gold is, you know, that division is Ferndale's to lose. And the reason why I say this, and I've seen Ferndale on film. I mean, they look the part. They look, they look really good. I mean, they're talented. They're front. I mean, like they're um, I mean, they do have a couple of players that transfer. I mean, they have a couple of freshmen who are really good. Um, I looked at their roster. They're not really that big. And, you know, they play the game hard. They're quick. They're athletic. Um, but they're not a big team. And, you know, and it says a lot about that win against Detroit Cass Tech earlier in the year. That was huge for Coach Keith Paris's team. I mean, to, to say, you know what? We can match up with teams in Division One. We can beat teams in Division One. Um... But when I look at, you know, and obviously they're playing against teams that are in Division One right now. So when I look at their district, and you're staring at Birmingham Detroit Country Day, I know Ferndale's not going to be afraid in that game. But in the matchup world, they don't match up well with the Yellow Jackets. I don't think a lot of teams do in... Division two. I don't think a lot of teams match up well with the Yellow Jackets. I mean, yes, Detroit Country Day, they got some good players. I mean, Ariana Wiggins is a really talented player for them. Um, but when I look at that district and for Ferndale, and, and I'm looking at that draw, and they're in a battle with Detroit Henry Ford. I mean, like for the two seed. To me, it's clear to me. Ferndale's the number two seed. And I know, and I looked at their Twitter fa their Twitter page, and they said that they're um, looking for at least a game, you know, to play. And I and it makes sense, um, you know, for them. And I know, um, and I know that I think they're going to, I think they're going to get a game for sure. Um, I know they had a team that canceled on them. 
But I think it'll be interesting to see how um, how Ferndale matches up, especially when they have to play a team like Birmingham Detroit Country Day. I mean, I would love to see how Ferndale matches up against some of the of the bigger juggernauts. Um, especially when you look at the red teams, when you look at a team like a Clarkston or a West Bloomfield or a Lake Orion or an Oxford or a Rochester or a Stony Creek. I mean, I would love to see how they match up with those teams. I mean, like, you know, or Royal Oak even. I mean, like, you know, it would be really interesting to see how Ferndale matches up against those type of juggernauts in the um in the red or in the white. So but right now a lot of people are not talking a lot about Ferndale. Be, but I think a lot of people are gonna start talking about him really soon. And you know, the way that, that team is, the way that they're built. I have the number three in the around the OA top twenty three. Um behind Clarkston and um and West Bloomfield. Um but you know, I think I think right now when you look at Ferndale, I think teams going to have to start getting used to them. But I would love to see Coach Keith Paris. The problem that I have with his, with his, with his program right now is he's got to build program strength. And you got to get more girls to come out and play. I mean, that's really where, you know, I need – that's where I can see, you know, why a lot of teams don't want to play Ferndale because they have one team. If they if you have two programs or three programs, you know I think I think it could see them playing. I could see teams stepping up to play them. So you know, so I think that's where Ferndale's at right now when it comes to the disadvantage factor. Is you know it's just having just one team instead of having like two or three. You know, if this building program strength, that's going to be the key I think for Coach Paris going forward. Is you got to build your program, and that's really that's where um the success will come. You just can't have just put everything on one program. You have to build, you got to build your middle school program. You got to build your, um, you got to build your freshman and JV programs. You just can't rely on one team. And that's really where I think a lot of people have an issue with Ferndale at is, you know, is having just one instead of having like two and three. So, you know, so that's really the issue a lot of people have with Ferndale right now. Um, Avondale right now is a clear two. Um, obviously it's been an up and down year for coach, um, for coach, um, for the, for the Yellow Jackets and, um, Roy Christman. Um, they've been up and down. Um, but I think Avondale will be fine. I'm not, I'm not too eagerly concerned about the Yellow Jackets. I think they're going to be fine. Royal Oak's been struggling. I mean, like, Fernandina University's been struggling. Um, Oak Park's been very young this year. Um, and then Pontiac, we know we talked about them earlier, um, in the podcast. Um, so we'll see what happens, um, in that division. And then the last but not least, the blue, the blue is probably going to be the most dramatic division. People say, well, why is that? Because the best team in that division right now looks to be Troy. But Troy has relied a ton on Diamond Prince to carry him. Sometimes it's good, but sometimes it's dangerous. And the reason why I say it's dangerous is because you look at you look at the um at the Colts makeup. You look at the makeup of that team. I mean, you got Reagan Zider, you got you got Carly Hagenbottom in the interior, Ali Mantuz in the interior, um, Kelsey Block, who's a defensive first player. Olivia Sprangle is a shooter. Her and her and Reagan Zetter are almost similar. So when you look at Troy, they got the makeup of a very good team. They got the makeup of it. I mean, they struggled early on, having to adjust to the transition period with Coach Laura Guzman. And they managed to turn it around, especially in division play, where they have really started the role. Now, the team I think that's going to get them fixed is Berkeley. Now, yes, Troy did beat Berkeley earlier in the year. Diamond Prince had to score 40 just for that to happen. Um, but I really love what Coach Clay Shaver's done with that team. Haley Kirkwood's been legit. Mavin Nolan's been legit. Um, 
They have Nadia Watt, who is an up-and-coming star. Um, I'm telling you right now, when I look at this Berkeley team, they are a they're fun to watch when I watch them on film. They are fun to watch. I mean, that team, that team is absolutely scary. And obviously, you look at that district. People have already already crowned in Detroit Renaissance win that district right now. I'm telling you right now, be wary of Berkeley. If I'm um, if I'm Coach Deshaun Wood, be wary of Berkeley. I mean, because two years ago it happened to you on your home floor. Now, I'll be a coach Shane Law coach that team, and we know and Shane Law is a very good coach. But I'm telling you, most of that of that team Detroit Renaissance had remember that game real well. So I'm telling you, watch out for Berkeley. Really, they're good. They're legitimately good. Um, and then there's Southie Arts and Tech. I can't trust A&T. I really can't. Um, and they have the offensive scoring scoring output. Defensively, I can't trust them one bit defensively. It's still they still have the same problems on that team. Same problems. They don't defend very well. That's the issue I have with Ant. Adams, they're very young. Um, you gotta like what Coach um, Joe Mulberg's been doing. Despite the record, they've seen a ton of progress. Um, Farmington's really struggled this year. Um, it's hard to explain for Coach from Natalie Nolak. Um, they've really struggled this year. And then Troy Athens, we know, has been. Um, they haven't played in a while, but they've started to struggle a little bit. They have not been the same team since that loss to Troy. Um, you know, and if you're Coach J.C. Klump, you can't let that loss to Troy bother you. I mean, you know, you look at good teams, it's how good teams respond to those losses. And, and, and teams let two, three, four, five, six losses happen to you, you know, and then you kind of get down on yourself. So if you're Coach J.C. Klump... You can't let that happen to you because if you do, you're in a lot of trouble. So right now when I look at Athens' scenario right now, they're in some trouble a little bit. They've got to get some things fixed because if they don't get it fixed, they're in some trouble. And really that's the bottom line when I look at the Colts right now. I look at the Red Hawks right now. Is they're letting that loss to Troy dictate their season right now. You got good players on that team. You got Alex Link on that team. You got Abby Malone on that team. I mean, you got a lot of veteran leadership on that Troy Athens team. They can fix some things. And I have confidence that they can. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. The district formula comes out next week for the girls, which is going to be really interesting to see how the seeds work. How everything is, I will have a column on that next week as well on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. The boys' basketball formula is also on the ON TV blog with, with, all, with all 23, 23 OA teams' and scenarios um, set right now as we speak around. That's also on the ON TV blog as well. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Cheerling District's coming up this week. Um, obviously. When I look at cheerleading, you got to look at, of course, Lake Orion, one of the favorites. Um, you got Rochester, Stony Creek, Adams. Um, and then, of course, you have Troy Athens as a wild card. Um, Clark's Oxford could be a wild card um, in their district. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, so, really, to watch for around the OA is the um, perennial juggernauts of competitive cheer. So we'll see what happens there in the districts coming up this weekend there. Wrestling, obviously, Clarkston, West Bloomfield are still in. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we'll see how things go. and uh, We'll see what happens going forward um, in the world of wrestling. So, all right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. 